Shalom, shalom. I greet you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you all and welcome to this program, Dwell in His Presence. And I welcome you so that we can continue with our lesson um, through this um, lesson that you are going through with uh, New Life in Stock. Shalom, shalom. I greet you in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. I bless you all and welcome to this program, Dwell in His Presence. And I welcome you so that we can continue with our lesson um, through this um, lesson that you are going through with uh, New Life in Salvation. I welcome you all as we are going to allow the Holy Spirit now to teach us and lead us into the right path as He has started with us. Uh, we are continuing with our lesson and let us pray now before we start. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I bless you, I honor you, and I magnify you. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that you have given us as our teacher. As we are ready now to learn from him, we welcome you, Holy Spirit, to teach us as our teacher this day. As we open up our ears, spiritual ears, so that we can hear and understand your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for this hour. I welcome you now in the class. As we continue with our lesson, we saw that Jesus met with the Samaritan woman at the well. And through their conversation, the Samaritan woman had a great thing in her, but no one knew. And that is why Satan destroyed her life. But Jesus came and restored back the ministry that was in this woman. So when Jesus went to that place at the well and this Samaritan woman came there and they had that conversation the woman didn't know what was inside her until when Jesus ministered to her and that is the time that the lady ran to the village and called his people to come and hear of what Jesus had spoken to her and we find that these people they welcomed Jesus into their village. For two days, Jesus stayed with them. And that village was transformed through this one lady. So in our lives, in our salvation life, it is vital for any person who is saved to live holy life. This is what Jesus did to this woman at the well. Holy life. As we are supposed to live, because that's the meaning of salvation. This is day-to-day -day life, which brings a testimony, which testifies the holiness of our God. We don't live in salvation through words, through spoken words only, but through testimony, through declaration that goes with our testimony. Confession that goes with our testimony, that testifies the holiness of our God. And through our life, the way we live, the way we move, the way we walk, the way we talk. In the book of Psalms, chapter 77, verse 13a, it says, Your ways, O God, are holy. God's ways are holy. And if his ways are holy, and when we are saved, or any person who is saved, is supposed to walk in his ways. And that is why the Bible says, that, teach us your ways. Now, which ways are these that we want him to teach us? It is holiness. Now, if we want to see God in our lives, it has to be through holiness. Because there's no way where we can see God. There's no way where man can meet with God, where human can meet with God, except through holiness, where he dwells. Because God dwells in his holiness. It is holiness that speaks about God. So when you want to see God in your life, when we want to, 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 to walk in his ways, those ways are holiness. But nowadays, we find there are so many things which are going on in this world that people nowadays are trying to find God in words, worldly things, and other things. But that's not true. 
this is not true because God is not found in wealth. God is not found in worldly things. God is not found in material things. And that is why people nowadays, they want now to, uh, to weigh God with material things. That if you have a good car, then that's, it shows that you have God. That's not true. Because all these things, even Satan gives his people, gives people things. But we can only weigh our life through holiness. Because when we want to find God, we will only find him where his holiness dwells. So we need to learn how to walk in his ways in order to find holiness. To walk in his ways, it is through his word. It is only when we commit ourselves in his word, when we sink our hearts in his word, when we make the word to live in us and us to live in the word, for the word to dwell in us and for us to dwell in the word. It is his word that teaches us and shows us the way, the right path, the way of holiness. Because salvation is holiness. When we talk of salvation, it's all about holiness. Because we have been sinners. We were sinning. And when we realized that we were sinners, we decided to give our lives to our Lord Jesus Christ so that he can teach us his ways so that he can make mold us. He can make us live according to his will. And that is why in the book of Psalm 15, Psalm 15 from verse 1 to verse 5, it talks about this. That who is this? this is, I like this uh, psalm, this passage that Lord, in verse 1, Lord who may dwell in your sanctuary. Hmm? Who is this person who will abide in your tabernacle? Who is this person? This is a question hmm? that the psalmist was asking. This is a question hmm? that was asked. Hmm? Who is this person who may live on your holy hill? Who is this person who will be able to climb your holy hill? Hmm? Because living or going towards holy life, it is climbing is here. Mm. So this is why this question was asked. And this question was asked because when the psalmist was seeing people, when he saw life, when he was experiencing life, he could not manage all this. And that is why he came with this question, asking God, my God, you better answer me this before I get confused. Because I can see all these things are confusing. I'm trying my best. I'm trying on my own, but I can't manage. Now tell me, Lord, who is this person who will be able to abide in your tabernacle, to dwell in your sanctuary, to dwell in your presence, hmm? to, 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 to climb your holy hill? Who is this person? Because each time I tried to climb, I fell down. Each time I tried to live according to your will, I found myself I'm falling down. I couldn't. I can't. I failed. He confessed that I failed. Hmm? So this is what happens to our lives. Hmm? Because many people, or some of us, or some people, are trying to climb the holy hill, but always fail. What makes them fail? The worldly character, worldly things. They make them to fail. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 12, from verse 1, 2, and 3, it says that let us not conform ourselves in worldly ways, but let us change, let us accept to be transformed and be a holy sacrifice before God. Because if we live towards worldly characters, there is no way we can be able to climb this holy hill. We will always fail. And worldly characters are like this now. Here verse 2, what it says. He whose walk is blameless. If your walk is blameless, we need to walk uprightly. We need to walk in his ways. 
And who does what is righteous? We need to do or to walk or to live in a righteous way. Because our righteousness, it is through Christ Jesus. So when we live according His will, we ask the Holy Spirit to help us so that our lives can reflect Christ Jesus. We cannot manage by ourselves. On our own, we can't. That is why whenever we try to climb that holy hill, we fail because we cannot manage by our own. In verse 3, in verse 2, it, uh, C says, Who speaks the truth from his heart? Listen to me. Truth cannot be in your mouth unless it starts from your heart. You have to carry truth in your heart. Then you'll be able to speak the truth. Why is it that now people who are saved, they are so deceitful. They are, they are, very, they are, very, they are, more, they are, they are the most liars. They speak liars and you fail to understand because truth is not in them. And the only way that we can get through is through his word because his word is the truth. There is no anywhere or any way that we can get the truth. And for us now to be able to dwell in that holy hill, the truth of Christ Jesus has to be in our heart. We have to accept it. We have to carry it. We have to allow it to dwell in us, in our heart, so that truth can come out from us. Amen. In verse 3 it says, And has no slender on his hand. Our mouth is full of bad words, full of hypocrisy. Why? Because the truth is not our in our heart. Hmm? It's not in our heart. He says, Who does his neighbor no wrong? We always do wrong to our neighbors. Eh? We have become more hypo, hypocritical, more than the, the worldly people. We fight one another. Eh? Brethren and brethren fight one another. There is no true love in us. We as children of God, for us to live in the true confession of salvation, that testifies the holiness of our God. Our lives must reflect His love. And the reflection will show up when we will do right or good to our neighbors, to our brethren. Mm. There are so many things. If you read these verses up to verse 5, it shows what kind or what type of people who are able, who are to, are able to climb or to abide or to dwell in His presence, in His holy uh, uh, he our life is number one it has to reflect God's character not worldly character so we fail to climb the hill because of the worldly character because the worldly character in us makes us to become heavy and it holds us behind it holds us backwards it pulls us backwards and we cannot manage to go because the world is pulling us down the world pulls us backwards so we need to walk according to the kingdom our father's kingdom character and some people they do fail because they take salvation as an old-fashioned life. Nowadays, people, are, they want to, to, to change the system of salvation, thinking that they can make salvation to cope with this new world. Let me tell you, my brothers and sisters, there is nothing like that, because this world is going towards its end. And whatever you see and whatever is going on in this world, it is on the preparation of the Antichrist. So there is no way that you can make salvation or to reflect this world. Neither you can make this world to reflect salvation. There is no way. Salvation is salvation. And salvation is not an old-fashioned thing. 
Salvation is the life of Christ. The life that we need to reflect. The life that we need to live. There is no analog salvation, neither digital salvation. There is no salvation of dot com. Old and old fashioned salvation. There is nothing like that. God is Him. He who was yesterday, He is today, and He will be there forevermore. He never changes. And there is no way that His salvation, salvation can change. It can never change. Salvation is salvation. And people who want to change, it means that they can never abide with his sanctuary. They will never and they won't be able to dwell in his holy hill. So it is for us to change. It is for us to change and allow the Holy Spirit to transform us. Allow the word to transform us. Allow the, the, the truth of Christ to transform us so that our thinking can change and be converted to Christ, to think like Christ. But let us not think that we can convert Christ to live his holiness and make him reflect the world. There is nothing like that. We need to be transformed. We need to be transformed. God has his principles and he will never change. It is for us to change and reflect his image. We need to walk uprightly and walk righteousness and let us not double cross our lives to look like whom what we were not created to be that we reflect Satan in this world but proclaiming and declaring that we accept we need to reflect our Jesus we need to reflect our God we need to reflect the Messiah not like worldly people not like the world that's why in the book of Galatians chapter 5 verse 15 it says live by the spirit and will not gratify the desire of the sinful nature this flesh that we are carrying it is of this world it has nowhere that it can go it will perish it will die it will end and there is nowhere it will go it has nowhere to go this flesh will not report on the white throne judgment seat of our God so this flesh it is the flesh that carries the sinful nature so let us walk in the spirit so that we will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This flesh is a deceitful flesh. It deceives us because this is the flesh that is being pulled backward by the world. Let us put our conscience in God and his word. If we give the Holy Spirit the chance for him to transform us, he will be able to do that to us. He will be able to work in us and we, we will be able to reflect Christ in our lives. Let us allow him to correct us. Let us allow him to cut all the horns that <clears throat> comes up very frequently whenever something happens to us. You can see the horns, the horns coming up, showing themselves that I am here, I am alive. That is pride. Let us humble ourselves before God. Let us humble ourselves before Christ and allow the Holy Spirit to transform us so that our lives can change. Let us pray. Father, I bless you. I honor you and I magnify you. Thank you for this moment that you have taught us through Holy Spirit. Here we are, our Father. We want and we are beseeching you that we want to climb that holy hill. We want to dwell in your presence. We want to abide in your sanctuary. We want to abide in your tabernacle. We want to, to dwell in your holy hill. But we have always been failing. Here we are now. As we dedicate ourselves into your hands, my Lord, Holy Spirit, work in us. Do something in our lives. Cut all the horns. Everything that is stopping us from climbing that holy hill. Everything that is holding us backwards for us not to climb that holy hill. Holy Spirit, 
as we dedicate ourselves into your hands, deal with our flesh, deal with our souls, deal with our state, deal with our minds, deal with our motives, deal with our feelings, so that we can be able to dwell in our Father's presence, so that we can be able to dwell in the Holy Hill. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, for your word. Thank you for everyone who has listened to this word. Thank you for changing us. Thank you for, for transforming us. Thank you for lifting us up in the name of Jesus Christ. As I dedicate each and every person unto your hands, give us a chance. Give us a way to dwell in the holy land, in the holy hill, in your presence. Thank you, my Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.